Welcome to the Tech Insider, where we talk to the people who can give you the insights and trends that matter to you in your business. I'm Christine Grail with Leica Geosystems. Last fall, Leica Geosystems introduced the Icon Trades Solutions, which includes a new AI-enabled tool for digital layout called the ICS50. This tool uses an innovative visual measurement concept with the Leica V-Pole. What is visual measurement technology? So it's camera driven. So it's not like, uh, you know, you're looking through a scope or anything like that. So on the tablet, you have a, a picture of the of the of what the camera is capturing. And what that camera is able to do is to track that uh, sphere. So the white ball with the red dots, it's able to lock on that. It recognizes that as what it is. Uh, the V targets, when you put them up on the on the wall, are kind of like a QR code target, uh, pretty much. Uh, but and then the EDM is just taking shots, right? So no different than our robot. The EDM is actually the one doing the measuring. Uh, but what the camera is doing is reading them little red dots on that ball, and all them red dots have a unique location on that ball. So it knows if it's tilted, which way it's rotated, which way it's if it's upside down, just because it's doing the geometry of them red dots. And what's pretty cool about it is it's doing all that math in a one second time period. So it's giving you an updated shot every second. So if you think about what it's doing, it's tracking it, it's reading all the red dots, uh, and it's doing the geometry between the red dots, and it's taking a measurement distance shot and giving you your position. And and it's kind of like coming from the industrial field and, and the amount of movement that they're used to in measurement in industrial, in the industrial space. And now it's being applied to construction. And I know that one of the big buzzwords right now is AI enabled. And so I, just some of the things that you're describing with the capabilities of the technology sound like that's where the artificial intelligence come into play. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that's... Uh... The technology is, is, is kind of, the AI is just everywhere at this point, right? I mean, even coming down to cameras that will recognize your face, uh, you know, your your iPhone has the face recognition, right? So uh, I, I, I'm not a big tech guy, like I said before, but I believe behind the scenes of what this ICS is doing is that it's recognizing, hey, that's the sphere, that's the ball, so I'm going to follow it. Well, and another thing that stood out to me in the release was computational photography, and that provides next level imagery and photorealistic site documentation. So is this instrument actually taking pictures while it's measuring? Yes. So it will store a picture at every point that you store uh, of actually the, the, you know, so if I'm shooting a wall, and a, it, it'll store a picture as it's storing a point. So when I go back and review that point, I can say, hey, did I take that shot on the inside of the of the window or the outside, right? And then you can look at your your picture and, and the points just overlaid uh, right there to, to give you that verification. Um, and then another, you know, it does do a 360 panoramic picture every time you set it up and you can use that to drive the, the, the camera, right? So if it's facing away from me and I need it to swing over here, I can just open up that picture and then tap where I'm at and it'll spin around and, and find me. Very cool. And I understand that AI is also being used to predict where the user is going to take the poll next. And that just sounds crazy to me. How can the technology yeah. know where you're going to go with this? And and what is the impact of that on a job site? Uh, so when you select a point to lay it out or even a line to lay it out, uh, traditionally, your measurements are coming from the the, the, the measurement data is telling you which way to go to and from left and right from the machine. Uh, this one has the capability because again, it's reading them red dots. It knows which way it's facing. So one option that I have on there is pick a point. It's going to tell me which way to rotate and then it's going to give me a distance to that point. So I don't have to think about, am I going this way? Am I going that way? Uh, I literally, it just sends out like a little blue sonar, kind of like your cell phone when you hold it on your map view and you see the blue sonars coming out, uh, it's real similar to that. So you uh, you click your point, little sonars come out the front. It tells you which way to go. It even gives you a little indicator at the top of the screen, you know, turn left, turn right, and then it'll start giving you your horizontal distance to that point. So Very cool. And what is the end result of that? It, it speeds up the process in the field? 
Yeah, I think I think it just makes it easier for the user. Um, you know, again, if you're thinking about the uh, measurements or and the data is coming from the machine to you, and you know, if you're turned around with your back to the to the robot, uh, you got to start thinking backwards, right? Uh, you know, it's telling me to go left, but you know, I, I need to go right, really, because I'm I'm backwards, right? So again, it's just uh, to me, it just uh, for a newer user, uh, it's a pretty user friendly to quickly get to the point without thinking about which way am I looking and which way is my data telling me to go. Um, it's just right away telling you to, hey, turn to your left. And then once you turn that direction, again, there's like a little bar up there that tells you, hey, you're online and then start walking to that point. Okay, cool. And so I have to wonder, how did you test this technology? Because obviously you're coming from the field. You've been used to using robotic total stations. Um, the applications for this are a little bit different. It's not something that you would typically use in a large application, I believe. Let's talk about that for a minute. Where where would this fit in? What type of project? Yeah, so I mean, so the camera is limited. It is camera driven. It's camera tracking. Uh, so, you know, distance plays a, an effect on that. So I think this fits into like some of the, you know, like a GC, right? So a GC may have some of these in their in their office and they just quickly want to know uh, if something's plumb or whatever. I want to know if this point on the ceiling matches the point on the ground uh, or just do some simple layout uh, just by using the existing uh, building or maybe even existing room because there is an option in there that you can set up using existing features without having control points. Um, but yeah, I think it fits into maybe that space, uh, where they're not really doing layout every day, all day. They're not shooting a, a thousand feet to a control point, uh, even though this will shoot almost 900 feet to a control point, uh, on a, on a round prism, but, uh, actually laying out using a sphere. Um, yeah. So I think some interior guys could use this a lot. Um, again, you got the option to do red light, you know, the red dot laser layout, uh, or you can use the, the V pole, uh, the layout. Um, what we, what I've come across a lot is, uh, guys using it for window openings and mechanical openings. So they just need to know the size of that opening and just make sure it's correct before they start designing. So, uh, we have a glass customer that, uh, bought one and it's just been a game changer for them, uh, before they were just setting up a rotary laser and then taking the tape measure and measuring from the, from the top of the opening to that laser line and then from the floor up and then writing writing down on a piece of paper what the measurements were and then at the end of the day it's like how do i get that data back to the office right so um this is just an example but i think it's a great example uh, but yeah they're able to take uh, not only is, is there the big v sphere uh there's a v pen so it's literally about this you know a little bit bigger than an ink pen it's got the same ball a little smaller on on, on the end of the ink pen and with a remote control so they can just walk around and basically just put the pin in the corner of the windows or openings, whatever, and just hit the, hit the store button on the remote control. And it's just collecting the data right there, uh, on their tablet. Uh, there's an option that you can, you know, do line work between the points. So you're, you're really just drawing this opening right on the tablet. And then from there, you can export that to a CAD file and just send it right away to the designers. And they already have a, a basically a detailed plan view of that opening. So it sounds like uh, significant time savings and also it's eliminating rework because you're making sure that everything is accurate right from this from the outset, right? To make sure that yeah. all of those measurements are just conveyed immediately to the office rather than having to rely on someone writing that information down and then copying that into some kind of program. So yeah taking pictures of the paper drawings and, and, and sending them. Picture. Yeah, no, they, uh, I think that's one thing that I really like about this tool because you can almost create every opening, whether it's a mechanical space or maybe it's a glass opening. Uh, they have a feature in there. It's called, uh, you know, create a plane, right? So each, you can have, you know, whatever, 100 planes in your project, but they would uh, basically go to doors and windows and they, they would have numbers associated with them, doors and windows. And they would create a plane just specifically for that opening and uh, and you do your measurements and you're actually drawing it within that plane and when you export it and let's say you had 10 openings in your file you get a nice cad basically just detailed sections for every 
plane that you create it, which makes it super nice. Uh, you can dimension it right there on the tablet and the dimensions come along with the CAD file. You can do offset lines. You can put text uh, right there on the tablet. It makes it super easy to add text. So if you need to label something or whatever, um, yeah, when you export that, all that data comes. And so on a designer end, uh, and, and this is with me when I first opened it up to see what kind of export it did, uh, I opened it up and I was like, wow, that's a, uh, that's pretty nice. <laughs> Each opening is a separate, again, little section box that you can just straight. I mean, the dimensions were already there. The text was already there. And I was like, nice. This is, uh, you know, it's not like in a, there is a 3D space option to export as well. Um, but, you know, it's not like you have to rotate around, get snapped on directly on a, on a uh, like a wall or a 2D plane um, where this just, it, them planes exports uh, make it pretty nice for the detailers. It sounds like it really accelerates the workflow. So all of this sounds really good, but how did you put it into practice? How did you test it out and make sure that it was actually something that would work in the field? Yeah, I don't know. Just by nature, I'm a, I got to believe it. Uh, I got to see it before I believe it type thing. So I'm like, okay, let's get one in my hands. Uh, so they sent me one and uh, I went out with a robot and I literally, you know, I, I captured, uh, you know, five or six points you know, all around me. And I set up some control points with them V targets. Uh, and this is using a, a robot, right? And I'm using a, a, a very small prism just to make sure I'm as accurate as I can get. And I ranged anywhere from 50 foot to about 170 foot uh, with these points. Um, then I exported that point file and I put it into the ICS, uh, the Icon Trades software, which what what what, what runs with ICS. Um, so now I have a point file, right? And I use them control points to get set up on. And then I went back and back checked them points that I laid out with the robot. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was good. It was right there. I mean, I'm talking at that 170 foot range, you know, you know, heavy eighth off, like I said, the further away you go with that camera uh, and using the tilt feature, uh, there could, you know, be a slight variance there. Uh, but, you know, you, you know, plumbing the rod, yeah, it's, you know, it's it's a it's within an eighth of what the robot was telling me. So um, once I got them V targets, once I got set up, I went ahead and, and just did an auto scan for V targets. So what did it do? It uh, you know, you hit scan for targets, and if you have them V targets uh, around you, it will automatically pick them up and store them as a control point. So I went ahead and done that, and then I kind of compared my original control points to the V target points that I stored. And that was within thousands of a foot, sixteenth um, or less. So I was like, okay. And again, I just continued to play with it. Um, just even in this room behind me here, I got a couple of V targets set up here, and I'll turn it on and you know let it capture the V targets. I'll move it to the other side and just make sure I can repeat what I did uh, before. So. Yeah, that's kind of my evaluation, my testing. So it sounds like it provides the accuracy that you would need um, in the right applications. Yeah, I mean, there's a few things that it'll do that the that the robot, you know, won't do. Uh, but yeah, as a you know, as a contractor in the field, there may be a job where you can get away with using you know the less expensive tool to get your job done, and then you know, there's jobs that, where you may need the the full blown robot. So. Uh, I think it definitely give you some options if you your project size ranges, right? Or maybe you got an exterior uh, crew that's doing, you know, foundations or anything outside, any that long distance, and maybe you got an interior crew. Uh, I've heard of contractors they'll they'll have that. They'll have uh, essentially two different companies within their own company, and they just do different things, different tasks. Uh, a lot of self performed general contractors do that as well. Uh, they'll have their own little crews doing different tasks. So what is the potential impact of this technology on the construction industry? You don't have to, you know, be that full blown surveyor mentality to run it. Uh, you can turn this thing on at self levels automatically. And if you have the V targets already established, it literally just starts capturing V targets and you're ready to go. You're on your control and you're ready to lay out. And, you, and the only thing you've done is touched about two buttons, uh, a power on the tablet and power on the machine. Um, and it's doing all that for you. So there, it kind of just takes that thinking out of it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the benefits of it would be just easy to use, light, 
compact and yeah, does a lot of things on its own. Uh, there's a lot of quick tools in there that I think that are beneficial. Um, one, I mean, just as simple as a, you know, set it up, turn it on, let it self level. And then right away I can start taking measurements and get a distance, right? I can plumb a point from a floor to a ceiling or vice versa. Uh, I could do a linear scan around a room. And like I said, when you start plotting them points, you can draw line work. So I can set it up in this room and just do a linear scan. And probably with, I mean, it depends on how far I space the points apart. I can define that, but I want to point every six inches, every foot, whatever I want. Uh, but yeah, within five minutes, uh, I basically got an outline of this room uh, that I can kick out to a CAD file or, or whatever it is. Uh, I can do a vertical linear scan. So if I'm setting up in a big opening or whatever, um, I can tell the robot to do a, a, a vertical linear scan and it'll capture that opening um, just like a, like a scanner would. I mean, not a full dome 360 scan, but a linear scan, right? And it's pretty fast doing that as well. Um, some other quick tools that it has in it is uh, uh, you can lay a pattern out on a wall and use your remote control. So if you're doing red dot laser layout uh, and you got a particular pattern that you need to put on the wall, maybe for mounting a piece of equipment or whatever it is, um, yeah, you can put that either the plan in there or if you know what the dimensions are between your spacings, you can use that remote control and say, hey, go over two foot, mark it, or even go over two foot and up six inches and then put a mark, you know, whatever. Uh, or you can use the V-pin on the wall, wh whatever whatever it is you want to do. It's pretty flexible. So it's, uh, and again, just then we're just some uh, a few examples of the quick tools. They call them quick tools, the where you basically just turn it on, jump right into quick tools and, and go to work. So that is impressive. It certainly sounds like speed and ease of use are the key yeah. things that everyone should take away from this idea of what is the ICS 50. It's really all about speed and ease of use. Yeah, I think of it like a little assistant, right? So if I if I'm working in this room and I got layout to do, I might mean, go ahead and just set this thing up and have it in the room. And uh, even if I'm not even using it, you know, eight hours full time uh, a day. Uh, but if I need to catch a measurement from one side of the room to the other, instead of me pulling out a tape measure by myself, well, why don't I just take two shots and get that measurement? Or, hey, if I need to make sure something's plumb, you know, one feature in there is a check plumbness of walls or whatever. So, you know, I can shoot the bottom of something and make that my uh, my reference. And then I can just scope up to the top with the red dot and, you know, and it'll tell me how far in or out it is, right? So if I'm if I'm holding something and I need to adjust something to plumb, I just put the red dot on the top and I look at my tablet and make my adjustments until I'm good. Um, I think about like, you know, concrete turnbuckles, right? So I can literally just put the red dot on the back of the form and look at my tablet and crank the turnbuckles until my wall is good and straight. So, um, yeah, so... I think of it as like a little assistant that you can have in the room uh, to where you may need someone, hey, hold into my tape measure and, you know, whatever. And you can kind of eliminate a lot of that, just having it in the room with you or in your game box, just pick it up and set it up and, and go. That is awesome. I, I can imagine that a lot of times while you were out there doing the work day in and day out, you would have liked to have an assistant. So the idea of an assistant is probably very appealing to a lot of people. Well, Nate, thank you so much. It has been great speaking with you about this. For anyone who's interested in learning more about the technology, you can find additional information in the show notes. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, Chrissy. Thanks. Be sure to check out the description for additional resources on this topic. If you enjoyed this content, give us a like. If you'd like to see more of this content, be sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Tech Insider. Mm -hmm.